أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا العظيمنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطهرين والسلام على صحابه الغر الميامين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد respected scholars brothers and sisters سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته that topic of Walayat al faqih is indeed one of the most discussed topics today and there's a lot of confusion that I believe surrounds the topic. There may not be so much clarity as to where does this Walaya start and what is the meaning of this Walaya and what is the scope of this Walaya. Therefore, I thought that in the coming 10 to 15 minutes, inshallah, I shall be looking at certain subtopics that we need to understand in order to comprehend the meaning of Wilayat al faqih Number one, what is the ultimate Wilayah and to whom does it belong? Number two, who is the manifestation of that Wilayah on the face of Ard? Number three, if the Prophet is the Wali of Allah upon the Mu'mineen, what is the scope of his Wilayah? Number four, after the Prophet, whom does this Wilayah transfer to? Number five, who is a faqih and how does the imam define as to after the imams whom does this walaya go to number seven what are different opinions on walayat al faqih so let's start from the first question that is or the first subtopic that is to whom does the ultimate walaya belong allah says in the quran allahu waliyul ladina amin so we see the walaya the guardianship Start from Allah and to him does the ultimate guardianship belong. He says Allah is the wali, the guardian of the mu'minun. What does he do? يُخْرَجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ He takes them out from darkness into light. After that, what is the, who is the manifestation of that uh, guidance and uh, that uh, wilaya, that guardianship on the face of Ard? He says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 55, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Surely indeed your wali is Allah and his Prophet. So we see that after, the, after Allah, the Prophet is the wali, the guardian of the mu'minun. Now what is the scope? If someone was to ask how can we summarize the scope of the guardianship of the Prophet, I'd say we can do it in seven. In seven issues he had the right of guardianship number one to define what's haram and halal yes quite simple i don't think it needs any further explanation number two to look after what we call as umur al hisbiya that is if there's a property of muslims that no one is there to take care of or the one to whom this belongs he is not able to take care of it for example he is mentally unstable or he's a kid so this wilaya go the prophet has the wilaya that he can control this Okay. Number three, that is to solemnize a marriage or to dissolve a marriage. The Prophet can solemnize a marriage or dissolve a marriage. For example, a lady comes to the Prophet, for example, and she says, My husband is oppressing me. The Prophet, after ascertaining the fact, can write there and then recite the talaq. If the uh, if the conditions are met, he can recite the talaq. He has this wala. Similarly, he can solemnize a marriage. These are number three. Number four, he can adjudicate. For example, I differ with my friend. I dispute about a piece of land. The Prophet has the wilaya to adjudicate in these issues. Number five is the collection of khums and zakat. He can collect khums and he can collect zakat. Number six and number seven. Yes, the five we discussed. After the number six and number seven, number six is the implementation of the penal code. He can implement the hudud, the punishment for certain crimes, for example, adultery, for example, fornication, for example, drinking of wine, for example, uh, theft or robbery. Yes, he can implement the penal code. Number seven is the implementation of the government. Yes, implementation of the government. After that, we see that after the Prophet, the Shi'i school of thought believes that he couldn't leave this world without anyone to look after these seven issues, seven areas of Wilaya. So we believe that he, as the verse goes forward, the verse I recited, chapter 5, verse 55, it says, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ Then, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ 
and those believers are the wali, the guardians who pray and give zakat while they are in a state of ruku. And from the rivayas, we have ascertained that this is about Imam Ali alayhi salam. And there's a very uh, clear hadith as well. Man kuntu mawla fahada aliyun mawla whomsoever's master I am, Ali is his master as well. So we say that after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the wilaya goes to Imam Ali alayhi salam. After Imam Ali, Imam al-Hassan, then Imam al-Hussain, Imam Zain al-Abidin, Imam Muhammad Baqir, Ja'far al-Sadiq, Musa al-Kadhim, then Ali ibn Musa al-Rada, then Muhammad al-Taqi, Ali al-Naqi, Hassan al-Askari, and finally to Imam al-Zaman, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now the question arises that after the Imam Zaman, the Imam Al Mahdi went into the Ghayba, went into occultation, what should we do? As in, we are left in a state of crisis, there is no one to look after these seven issues. So we resort to logic and we resort to the Ahadith. The logic dictates that whoever is closest to the Imam in terms of appearance, in terms of spirituality, he should be followed. And the Imam himself says, he says, Imam al Hassan al Askari alayhi salam says in Wasail al Shia chapter uh, volume 27, page number 131, if anyone wants to refer for research purposes. He says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْفُقَهَاءِ صَائِنًا لِنَفْسِ حَافِظًا لِدِينِ مُخَالِفًا عَلَى هَوَاهُ مُطِيعًا لِأَمْرِ مَوْلَاهُ فَلِلْعَبَامِ أَنْ يُقَلِّدُوا As for the jurists, amongst the jurists, whoever is vigilant of his soul and protects his religion, as in his pious, مُخَالِفًا عَلَى هَوَاهُ opposes his desires, مُطِيعًا لِأَمْرِ مَوْلَاهُ follows his master, فَلِلْعَبَامِ أَنْ يُقَلِّدُوا Then for the general populace it is upon them to follow him yes this is one narration another narration from this was from imam al-hasan al-askari another narration from imam al-zaman al-sharif he says and it's in uh, al-ihtiyaj by shaykh al-tabarrisi in the second volume page number 283 he says as for current affairs, then relate or turn towards the ruwat, the narrators of a hadith, that is, in this context, the jurists. فَإِنَّهُمْ حُجَّةِ عَلَيْكُمْ For surely they are my hujja over you and أَنَا حُجَّةُ الله. I am the hujja of Allah. Now, we see that the imams are telling us to resort to the jurists, the faqih. And who is the faqih? The linguistic meaning of faqih is who has a deep understanding of the religion. Okay. Now, what, is, what then is the topic that scholars differ in? What is the issue that scholars differ upon? We believe that after Imam al-Zaman, and it is believed unanimously by the Shia scholars, that the first five scope, the first five dimensions of wilaya that we mentioned, Number one, what is that? Adjudicate. Number two, solemnize a marriage, dissolve a marriage. Number three, khums and zakat. Number four, to look after the endowments, umur al-hizbiyya. Yes? Similarly, what is number five to define halal and haram? Not necessarily in that order, but yes? These five issues are transferred to the faqih. He, can, he has authority in all of these issues, in all these five scopes. Now, where is the difference of opinion? Scholars differ whether the sixth and the seventh, that is implementation of the penal code and the establishment of the government is proven to be in the authority of the, well, uh, of the faqih, of the jurist or not. This is the area of dispute between various scholars. Yes. There's one nadariya, one theory or one opinion that is nadariyatul wilayatul mutlaqa. It says that all of these seven issues that we saw belong to the imam, were in the imam's authority before him in the prophet's authority are transferred to the faqih, to the jurist. And those who believed in these, you know, many times people come and say that it was Atul al Khomeini who was the first one to say it. No, that's, uh, that's an allegation. The first scholars were Sheikh Al Mufid, Sheikh Al Tusi, Atul Naraki, and Karaki before Imam Al Khomeini to discuss such issues. And they believed in Nadariyat al Walayat al Faqih al Mutlaqa, that is the 
idea that absolute authority goes to the faqih, to the jurist. And uh, including these scholars, there were Ayatollah Khomeini and Ayatollah Khamenei who believed in this, and Ayatollah Baqir al-Sadr who believed in this. As for certain other scholars, for example, Ayatollah al-Khui, he believed in the first six. In the seventh, he disputed. He disputed, he said, I don't necessarily believe in the establishment of the government. So we see that there's a difference of opinion as to whether the government can be established and whether the penal code can be implemented. Now, if someone comes to me and says that I oppose Atul al Khamenei because my marja doesn't believe in Walat al Faqih, Baba, every one of the scholars believes in Walat al Faqih. Because the time, the point at which you accept that the first five are in the uh, in the scope of the wilaya of the authority of the jurist you believe in walaat al-faqih don't say you don't believe in walaat al-faqih say you don't believe in walaat al-faqih al-mutlaqa you don't believe in the absolute authority to the to the jurist but that may be from a fiqhi standpoint of view that the jurist you follow may not necessarily agree to the establishment of a government does that mean if there's a government that has been established and the muslims the shi'i school of thought in particular is benefiting a lot from this does it mean does it mean that we should oppose it just because i don't believe in it from a fiqh standpoint of you know there's a, dis a difference of opinion over various issues why should it lead me to slander each other why should it lead us to fight each other why should it lead us to ignore the benefits that have come after the revolution of Iran? How many films were made that uh, made us aware of the history of Islam? How many other things were that uh, guided us? Who is there in the Arab countries, in the Middle East, who can look, for example, USA in the eye and challenge them? No one but Iran. Yes. So we see that Although certain scholars may not necessarily believe in Walat al Faqih al Mutlaqa, there's no reason to oppose the Walaya that has been established in Iran. The Wali al Amr that is in Iran, there's no need to uh, oppose necessarily. And uh, should we form groups on the basis of who believes in Walat al Faqih al Mutlaqa or not? No. This topic is always open for discussion. Everyone has the right to come with his arguments and logical beliefs, logical proofs to further strengthen what he believes in. This should in no way lead to slandering. Inshallah, I think and I hope that this video must have made clear for you the idea of Wilayat al faqih and I hope that we stop slandering each other in this name, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.